Let's go back to CC Moore because she's so good explaining this. Because that really just ties that one person to that item. Now, it was likely that this was touch DNA. Certainly, it's possible there was blood. They didn't tell us what type of DNA, but most likely it was touch DNA. And that would typically be just a few skin cells. This might have been a very small amount of DNA, but because of today's technological advances, we can detect even the tiniest bit of DNA. How reliable is touch DNA if it is skin cells in comparison to, say, blood? It's a great question. It is more transferable. So, of course, you would like to have blood. You would like to have semen or saliva. And they might. You know, they haven't shown all their cards. We don't know all that they have. But touch DNA, now that we can use it because of the sensitivity of our equipment, it also means you have to be more cautious about using DNA as your only evidence. So it's a really positive thing that they clearly have other evidence. This is just one piece of it. We have seen DNA, touch DNA transfer in other cases. Of course, it's fairly rare, but it is something that you have to be aware of and make sure that there are other aspects of the case also pointing at the same person. Cece, good news, I guess. It's hard to commit murder without leaving something behind. That's right. Yeah, I've been saying this for weeks. That type of violent, intimate crime, it is virtually impossible not to leave something behind, even if you are a criminology PhD student. So I am not at all surprised they were able to find something. So I think I really like that report because she so explains it and so articulately. And the one thing she said that was amazing when she said, basically, let's not use just this evidence as the only evidence you have against a defendant. You need other things. And lo and behold, they do have other pieces of evidence, Mike. Yeah, Bill, they've got, you know, the, like you say, the video, the, the ring camera stuff. You've got the fact that he has a white Hyundai. You've got the uh, mentioning of a balaclava kind of thing, the eyebrows, the uh, Dylan Mortensen's description of who she saw. But you know what? There's still going to be Ann Taylor arguing that everything, you know, is irrelevant. It's wrong, that sort of thing. She's going to be beating up on every single which is her job. She's going to try to cast doubt and create reasonable doubt on everything the prosecution brings in in their direct case. So that FBI agent, that investigative genetic genealogist specialist, are, is, is, and she's going to do her job, is going to beat them up. And those other DNA, those other, I think there's two drops of blood and something else, a glove found outside, she's going to be making as much as she can about that. So the prosecution, hopefully by now, has answered the question as to tr attempting to try to find out who that DNA belongs to so they can answer Ann Taylor. If I'm Bill Thompson, I'm tying up every single loose end that I possibly can before we go to trial. So it's not a 100% slam dunk because the jury has to understand and they have to agree. But, um, you know, Ann Taylor does have some wiggle room in order to try to make um, some reasonable doubt out of the DNA evidence. You know, Mike, I'm glad you mentioned the other, there's, I think, three other potential DNA, unidentified DNA in the house. One, I believe, on the banister, one on the glove outside, and I'm not sure where the other sample came from. Well, there was, um, I think, uh, DNA underneath the fingernails of, was it Madison Mogan? Yeah, I think it's Madison. That was inconclusive. They, they couldn't find out. But I think it's up to the prosecution to attempt to find out Mm -hmm. who that DNA uh, belongs to. And if they can, or if the negative results, at least they tried, it shows that they weren't trying to hide potentially um, exculpatory evidence. So that is 100%. And I'm sure uh, Bill Thompson, being a uh, competent prosecutor, would know that he has to do that. Yeah, it's going to be expensive, and they're going to have to go through the whole thing, go through CODIS, um, you know, go through the other ancestry websites, like you mentioned before, uh, Gen Match and MyHeritage, and demonstrate that they at least tried. And it could be that they tried and they got no hits whatsoever. 
in any database. That's possible. But the good thing is they have they would have to show that they tried for a Koberger. Um, she's uh, Ann Taylor is going to say, look, that is, you know, evidence that shows reasonable doubt as to the prosecution's whole story about Brian Koberger. There was other people in the house doing this. And Brian, all you have against Brian really is a single skin cell on the knife sheath. I mean, she can, you know, make that argument and she has to, she has to, uh, you know, zealously advocate for her attorney, her, her client. And I expect her to do that. But um, yeah, this is really important because the DNA and, and how accurate it is really supports a guilty verdict for Koberger. And this may be how Ann Taylor will approach that. It's simply a tip. It's a lead generator. It's a highlight. I have the wrong one on. I have the, let me bring this one up. Uh, okay. I was playing CC Moore again. Here we go. This is uh, Ann Taylor. Tip. So we can point law enforcement in the right direction with this technique, but they still have to perform their full investigation. 